So before we get started, why don't we run the application so we can see the edit form that's created. And then we'll dive into adding server-side validation along with client-side validation to our application. So here's our sample application. It's taking just the default MVC template. And I've got a link here that says create new episode. When I click this link, it will open up to the default template uh, edit form that I generate just by utilizing the built-in templating that's part of MVC framework. And I have the ability to provide an ID, an episode number, and things of that nature. And if I click create, it'll actually go to my controller, won't do anything at this point in time, and redirect me back to my home page. Well, in that scenario here, it's, I want to add in validation that specifies that the ID must you know, be provided, the title must be provided, that you know my title doesn't extend uh, exceed 25 characters or 50 characters, something like that. So I want to do this using the MVC framework. So how do I do this? The first thing I need to do is open up my account, my episode view model. My episode model is pretty generic. It just basically has four properties on it. To utilize the server side uh, validation that's part of MVC, I need to utilize the data annotations namespace that's part of the .NET framework. So I want to come up here with we'll the systems.component model that data annotations. And this is what gives me access to these resources. So I'm going to say that this is required. And if it's not required, I'm going to allow or provide an error message. But we're going to actually make title and description required as well because, you know, hey, I want to have good data. But on top of also adding these required, I want to add in some simple validation. So I want to put in that the string length must not exceed 25 characters for this example. And if I do get a string, you know, if I do exceed my length, I want to provide an error message. And you'll also notice there's some other values I can provide in. So if I really want to provide in a minimal length, I could do that as well. But uh, we're going to leave it just as a maximal length. And then for the episode number, we want to add in a range indicator to basically say that the minimum is zero. And we'll just for now put the max at 100 just to, to show how it can work. And we'll provide an error message here. So we can provide this. So I've done three different kinds of validation. I've put required attributes that will allow me to say that this is a required field. I provided a range attribute that says, hey, you need to provide the value and it must be between these values. And I've also provided a length validation, say it's a string, I want it to be at least zero up to 25 characters long. So how do I actually get this so that when we edit the values in our form and submit them to our controller, that will perform the validation and return me the results to the user. Now the first thing we're going to do is come back to our episode controller. Our episode controller, we have the two action results already. We have our get and our post. And right now they don't do anything. But in order to enable server-side validation, all you need to do is provide an if statement, say if model state is valid. So basically saying if it's not valid, let's go ahead and return to my view. And that's it. I don't need to touch anything on my view. I need, don't need to enable anything on my view. Um, I just need to let it run. So let's go ahead and run our application now and see if I can provide some values and see if I can get my server-side validation to kick in. So our form's loaded. Let's go ahead and go into our edit screen again. Let's provide an episode number that's 999. Let's go ahead and provide a title that exceeds my minimal or max of 25, and let's not provide a description. So we should expect to get some validations here. So if I click Create, uh, before I do that, let's go back to my controller. 
we click create, I hit my controller, and you'll see that my model state is false. In fact, if I start looking at my model state, I can even start determining what values failed. So if I wanted to report all those somehow, you know, maybe log them to the database or something like that. And then when I want to let it come back, it tells me the episode must be between 0 and 100. My title exceeds 25, and I must provide a description. So if I provided you know, 1, 1, So if I did all this, click Create, it now redirects to my my main page because of pass validation. Well, that's pretty cool, but the downside to this is it's only done on the server, which means that I'm going to require the user to make complete round trips, passing my payload back and forth in order to perform some validation. Although this has a lot of merit, I want to actually be able to do this on the client side. So how do I go about adding the ability to perform client-side validation. To do this, what we need to do is go back to our project. I don't need to touch my control and I do not need to make any changes to my model because my annotations can be used on the server side or the client side as well. So what I do need to do is go into my edit episode page. And I need to add in some JavaScript and some custom HTML. So the JavaScript I want to add in, I'm going to provide it in a content area that I have set up and it's going to be called my script content. And what I need to do is reference a few script files. Now these script files I'm about to reference are part of the MVC template, so you'll get these when you set up your project. And so if I come into scripts, if I choose Microsoft Ajax, and click OK. And we'll go ahead and create the other script entry I need. And this one I need is a Microsoft MVC validation script. Its type is also JavaScript. And then last what I need to do is provide one helper tag to the top of my content area here. So I'm going to say html.enable client validation. And that's it. So I've added two JavaScript entries, one client validation entry and that's all I've done. haven't changed anything else. So our page is loaded. Let's go into our edit screen. So now if I provide an episode of I don't know 99 again you'll see that I immediately get the validation that I have an episode that is outside of my range. If I provide a title that is outside of my range when I leave I immediately get that validation as well so you'll see that now I'm getting my validation done in real time on the client side versus on the server side and I did it with all of about three lines of code and two of those being just adding references to the JavaScript libraries that the MVC project provides for me and the last one being adding the enable client validation so to recap what we've done here, what have we had to do? I first had to provide the usage of my data annotations which are part of the system.componentmodel.data annotations namespace. So I added these. I then in order to get server-side validation had to add in the model state.isValid check and simply return to the, main, to the original view. And then to get client-side validation I had to add reference to the following scripts as well as add in the HTML.enable client validation tag, which will allow me to wire up my data annotations on my model to my validation on the client. So I hope you see this is very simple and very easy, and until next time.